We all know that getting your nutrition and fueling spot on is essential if you want to perform at your best on your bike. But it becomes even more important if you are doing a multi-stage event, such as those organised by the Oat Route, one of which you will very well know is being done by our very own John Bevan very soon indeed. That's right, John, you pay attention, mate, because Lloydie is going to set you a test after this, and he said it's not even going to be multiple choice. And the reason that not only John needs to pay attention, but anyone doing a multi-stage event is because it's not about fueling for one day, it's about fueling for the day after as well, and the day after that, and it's about optimising your recovery so that you can start each day as fresh as possible. Fueling, of course, involves both food and drink, and we're going to start with the latter, i.e. your hydration. Now, you might just about get away with not having the perfect hydration strategy on a single day event, but if you get it wrong in the middle of a multi-stage event, you're going to find it very hard to get yourself back on track for the remaining days. Your hydration strategy will depend on the weather. So the hotter and more humid it is, the more fluids you're going to lose whilst you're riding. So our friends over at Science in Sport recommend drinking between 500 millilitres and one litre each hour of riding, depending on the temperatures. Now getting this dialed will help significantly in actually getting the best out of yourself, as dehydration can lead to a big drop in performance mainly because it can make you feel pretty unwell. However good your hydration strategy is whilst you're riding, it's still very important that you concentrate on your rehydration after you've been riding. Now, different people have got different sweat rates, but the good news is that it is quite easy to calculate them, uh, even for Cy. And that is because a litre of water weighs a kilogram. So all you need to do is weigh yourself pre-ride and post-ride, wearing exactly the same things. And you will know that, for example, if you've lost two kilograms, that will all be fluid, and therefore that is two litres of water. Yeah, now hopefully you won't lose quite that much with your hydration strategy, but if you do, then actually rehydrating after isn't quite as simple as just then consuming two litres of water. Our bodies are great, but they're not quite that efficient. So for every, let's say, 750 millilitres of water you lose, you're probably going to have to drink either an extra half a bottle or indeed a whole one just to make up. The rest, of course, you'll be familiar with. You just we out. So the other thing you can do is also add in electrolyte tablets to the water that will help you retain it much much quicker. However you choose to rehydrate there you do have to do it gradually. But ideally you'll be starting the next day weighing exactly the same that you weighed the previous day. Rehydrate, nice one. Now let's get on to food i.e. calorie consumption. This, again, is very important to get right in your event because any mistakes that you make are very much going to be highlighted in a bad way when you're doing a multi-stage event. That's right, so glycogen is going to be our primary source of fuel, even over long, consecutive and hard days. So, carbohydrate consumption should be our primary consideration. It's going to keep us going when we're on the bike, and it's also going to help us recover off it because we're going to be replenishing those all-important glycogen stores in our muscles. Most of the rules which apply to nutrition in a one-day event also apply to a multi-stage event. And that starts at breakfast, which you want to consume about two to three hours before your event starts, and which you want to consist of mainly slow-release carbohydrates. Then during your event and immediately after, you want to be consuming calories which consist of very fast-release carbohydrates. That's right, so during the event, we're going to be aiming to take on board about 60 to 90 grams of carbohydrate per hour. Now, how you take those carbs on board is kind of up to you. You could have energy bars, you could have my world famous GCN Uber bar, you could have more easily digestible carbs as well, so like an energy gel or indeed an energy drink, which of course isn't food at all, it's a liquid. Yeah. But the way you'll know what works for you is simply by trying different things out and experimenting in training. Now just with, as with your hydration, the likelihood is that you might just about get away on a one day event with not having the optimal calorie consumption. However, do the same thing at the start or in the middle of a multi-stage event and you're very much going to know about it. And to reiterate, a multi-stage event is not the time nor the place to be trying to lose weight. 
You want to start your recovery process as quickly as you possibly can after you have finished your ride. And nutritionally, you're going to get most of what you need from a well-designed, good quality recovery drink like this one. From carbohydrates to electrolytes to protein, which is a subject we will get onto fairly shortly. Now you will find that most professional racers do tend to consume a recovery drink immediately after their races. And we would recommend that you do exactly the same thing. Soon after your recovery drink, a small meal of boiled rice, potatoes or pasta will aid the recovery and replenishment process, followed by a healthy and balanced evening meal. Now you can overeat even during a multi-stage event, so if you've got a particularly big appetite, that might be something you need to keep in mind. But it's always far better to overeat than to undereat. Okay, time for some controversy. Let's talk about protein. Now any mention of protein on GCN ignites some fairly, well, some fairly passionate uh, debate down in the comments section. And while we're absolutely fundamentally in agreement that carbohydrate should be your primary concern in refueling from exercise, there is an awful lot of very robust peer-reviewed scientific evidence that suggests that protein is really, really important for recovery. That's right. Uh, now, on longer rides, let's say of six hours or so, which might be something that you contend with in a multi-stage event, some experts say that you should consume a little bit of protein every three hours or so because your body will begin to break down its own muscle. However, other experts completely disagree on this, and so certainly this is an area which needs some more research. Yeah, but post-ride, there is almost no disagreement. Consuming the right amount of protein is essential for recovering greatly. And that is, as I say, agreed upon by almost all respected nutritionists and exercise physiologists out there. So the idea of consuming the right amount of protein is that it promotes anabolism, so the building up, and it minimizes catabolism, which is the breaking down. So two rather awkward terms there. But essentially what it means is that your body is always building up and breaking down muscle fiber. And so providing your body with the right building blocks to make new muscle fiber is only going to help. This is particularly relevant immediately post-ride. So that recovery drink we talked about earlier, which is predominantly carbohydrate based, but with some good quality protein also amongst the ingredients, is really going to help you recover. The quicker you can recover, the better you're going to feel the following day, particularly useful in a multi-stage event. And if you're not into your recovery drinks, you could always add some lean chicken or some beans to your rice or some peanut butter to your bagel, just to give you a couple of examples. Fueling then is not rocket science, even for a multi-stage event. Just try to get into the habit of constantly thinking about what you are supposed to be doing. Often the problems occur when your mind drifts and you forget to do what you know you should do. Yeah, I think we've both been guilty of that, haven't we? Right, so to recap then, you need to drink between half a litre and a litre of fluid per hour. More if it's hot, less if it's cold. You'll know how much because to be fair, you'll get thirsty and that's a great indicator. Then you also need to consume between 60 and 90 grams of carbohydrate per hour on the bike. And then pay particular attention to your post-ride recovery drink and then also meal. Then also remember to replenish those glycogen stores for the evening so you've got as much fuel as possible for the next day. Follow all of that advice and you won't go too far wrong. We're not going to say that you're going to float around the event without any pain in your legs, but you're certainly going to feel a lot better than you would do if you got things wrong. That's right. I guess all we need to say now is good luck and enjoy. And also, one last thing, make sure you subscribe to GCN. Yeah, uh, and two more relevant videos to you right now. Firstly, if you'd like some more in-depth knowledge on how to recover quicker from your riding, there's a video for that on my side down here. Yeah, or just down here, hopefully it's not too late, it's how to train for multi-day stage races and sporties.